Hey, we want to take just a few moments to say thank you for choosing to worship with us here at One, whether it's in person or via our YouTube or podcast. Uh, I was asked just last week, what is one word that describes One? And I believe with all my heart that one word is family. And so my prayer, our prayer, is that you experience, whether it's in person or one of the many other avenues that you have to uh, experience worship with us, that you feel like a part of our family. Remember, go with God and you can't go wrong. If you're with me and you have your Bible or your device or you don't have either and you got, or you got your hands full with your, your baby or your kid, which is awesome and I'm glad you're here, they'll be on the screen for you, okay? I want you to take and open your Bible. Uh, let me find my place on my iPad here. It would be really good, wouldn't it? I want you to open to Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20. I'm going to read 7 through 12, Acts chapter 20, 7 through 12. Luke rejoins Paul here. It's his second missionary journey. Uh, it's a really cool, it's, it's kind of, I can tell you where, biblically it's Asia Minor, but it's modern day Turkey. If you look at, if you care about stuff like that, I'm kind of a Bible geek. I like stuff like that. I love archaeology. Uh, I am Raiders of the Lost Art generation. Uh, Goonies, I will forever be a Goonie. Um, and uh, of course, I like Harry Potter. I mean, I'm modern too, but anyway, I'm kind of a geek like that. So this is modern day Turkey. He, he, he's going to leave the next day, and so he's, 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 he's making his speech. He's going to preach, and uh, you've heard this text. You may have heard it preached before, uh, but it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty famous because it is where Paul preaches to midnight, um, and, and a guy falls out the window, okay? And so we're going to talk about that. We're in a series called Walking Dead, all right? It is, yes, it is a spinoff of the show The Walking Dead. Um, you don't have to like that show to like Jesus. It's not got anything to do with that. It has to do with, with what I believe is the church most of the time sleeps, okay? And so I want you to turn to Acts chapter 20, verses 7 through 12, all right? And so I want you to get there, but I'm going to just let me have fun and do what my giftedness is. And so the, the, it's a spinoff. Uh, I, do enjoy this, I do enjoy the show. Uh, well, you can judge me later. That's up to God uh, to judge me. And so, but it, I, what, I, what I've seen over the 18 plus years of doing this is that most of us, most of us, will find ourselves from time to time, if not some of them that are un, even unaware of it, walking around like zombies. They just go through the motion. Though the first message I brought, there's, this is the last one. There's three of them. The first one was zombieology. And I wanted to show you how the Bible talks about being dead. I showed you the Greek word, what that word means. And what God said, I've come to make, if you have King James, I memorized King James in seminary. It's not what I preach from. I preach from the New Living Translation. Not that that's better or worse. It's just easier for me to understand and read. Okay? Now, but it says he quickens us. Those who were dead in trespasses, those dead in sin, all right, that was bound and that was sin, missing the mark. What's the mark? Glorifying God. There's none righteous, no, not one. That was the first message. I wanted to teach you what it means to be dead. And then I wanted to get to a point in that first message that I, I wanted you to understand that it's all about being driven by your appetite, okay? All right? And so this whole series is a, is a spinoff of that. But if, you know, if you've watched or know anything about zombies, what they're driven by is their appetite brains, okay? All right, Braden, will you come up here for a minute, please? Hey, y'all, if I use one of my students to illustrate this, this is the, this is the studly, I was going to say lovely, but I'll say studly, Braden, uh, may not even say his last name, but everybody knows, Patterson. Right there is great, okay? Now, I want you to show this, 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 the beautiful, see how beautiful they are? You see what I get to see, right? Yeah, okay. All right. That's my boy. All right, I want you to show them how a zombie walk. Well, g- give me your best interpretation of how a zombie walks. Okay, ready? Y'all ready? Here we go. Sound effects and all, man. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Okay, right? Right? Okay, watch this. You never know. That's right. Give, give, give my studly assistant a round. Okay. You never know what you're going to get into at one, all right? Kara, come on up here for me. Come on, sweet. Come on. Come on. This is Pastor Bradley and Amia's daughter, okay? So just, just so you know, this is a PK, all right? All right, here we go. Here we go, Kara. I want you, I want to stop right there. I want you to, now, now, I don't want you to, he, he, I don't think we can top that zombie impression, okay? Man, that was Emmy, a cat, I mean, that was awesome, right? Oscar worthy almost, okay? Gets that from his mom. Okay, all right, here we go. What I want you to demonstrate, now watch this because I'm going to shift gears on it, but I'm going I'm to actually bring you to the message this morning. I want you to demonstrate how you think or how you've seen your sister, because I don't know, it, you know, I've never spent the night over there with you guys, or maybe even your mom, how they would walk if they were sleepwalking. Just give me your best 
interpretation of sleepwalking. Or if you walk in your sleep and somebody's videoed you, let's see it. Oh, very good. No sound effects. I could have, I could have, give me a high five. Give me a high five. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. You say, well, what in the world? You see, I believe a lot of times in the church, in this thing we call Christianity, most of us are sleepwalking. And it is closely related to zombies. We are driven by our appetite. What is an appetite? An appetite is for the flesh. It is, and I'm telling you, most of the time, even those inside the walls of the church, they're driven by the appetite of the flesh. You, you want a family to run the church. You want, a, you want a committee to run the church. You want a team to run the church. You want all these things. Or I've got my opinion. Or I've had them come to me. That, that not here. We've, we've, in four years, praise be to Jesus, because we've started on the right foot, I believe. And I pray we'll end on the right foot when he raptures us or he calls me to the, through the grave, right? And we've not had this, but I've had them come to me and go, well, if I was the preacher, and I've told you this, I love look back at it. Well, you're not the preacher, <laughs> I mean, you, you know, he didn't call you to be the preacher. I'm the preacher, and so this is what God is saying to do, and this is what we're going to do. But there's a lot of that. There's a lot of folks that just go through the motion, and it's hard to tell the difference. And, and so I wanted you to understand in that first message that the zombieology is all about our appetite. Do we feed the flesh or do we feed the spirit? And if we're not careful, and this is how we'll know if we're actually trying to live out Godly life, is that here's the difference. If a pig falls in the mud, what do they do? They'll wallow in it. They're in hog heaven. But if a, a sheep fall in the mud, they're going to cry for someone, the master, to come get them out. There's a difference. And so in your nature, if you love the mud, then you may not have the nature of God living in you because you may fall in the mud as a child of God. You may stumble in the mud, but you don't want to stay there. Do you understand? That's zombieology 101. I understand that I still make mistakes. I still battle the flesh. I still crucify it daily. But the reality of it is, is when I do fall in the mud, I can't stay there. I have this great, great regret and not this sorrow over, whoa, I shouldn't have done this. There's this inside of me like I've let down my dad. There is nothing that troubles me more than to be upset with my daughters. And, I, and I, I even, even as recent as last night, they will ask me, Dad, are you mad? I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. And to look in their eyes. And so I want you to get, this is a spinoff, yes, and we're silly, but it is very scriptural. And it's to get your attention that you will walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit of God. And then the second message I wanted you to understand was in, the, the, in Death's Valley where Ezekiel saw all those dry bones, how they were scattered and how they began to rattle. And then they really understood that they mattered. I wanted you to get that even though you may have been sleepwalking through this life, you may have been feeding the flesh, that God says, I can still speak life. And I want wanted you to get that if you will have faith the size of a mustard seed, if you'll just exercise a little trust in God that those bones can live again, whatever area of your life seems to be dead and rotting, that if you will speak life to it, if you will give it unto God, it can come to life again. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And that freedom is life. And as he, as he brought those bones back to life, they were animated, yes, but they didn't get, they were active, but they didn't get animated until the Spirit of God blew into them. Then they become characters, living objects. And so this morning, I want to talk to you about staying alive, or if you want to just put a little side note there, staying awake. Staying awake. Because it is hard to tell the difference between a zombie and a sleepwalker. It's hard to tell the difference between a zombie and a sleepwalker. Not only by the way they move and act and by the language, but also even by the way they smell. You say, well, I believe zombies would stink. I've met a lot of folks in church that are sleepwalking, and their attitude stinks. Y'all all right? That's too real for you this morning? Maybe I should add a little butter to those grits. Huh. I don't rule that way. And so I want to give you a, 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 one of the greatest illustrations of falling asleep while doing what I believe this thing is about. And so let's read the Bible together. Acts 20, verses 7 through 12. On the first day of the week, here's a great, I, I'm sorry, I just, I, I love the Word of God, and I study so much, it just comes out. Here's a, here is one of the first, and, and, and they, they would drive it home. Luke is writing. Luke is rejoined, because Luke is the penman uh, of, of Acts. Here is, here's where he drives home that they met the first day of the week. What is the first day of the week? It's Sunday. Look at any calendar, it's Sunday, okay? It's Sunday, all right? 
Now, I want you to understand, I'm not, I'm not here to criticize any other denomination or anything like that. I just want you to know the Bible. Don't want you ignorant of the Bible. I want you to know the Bible, okay? I don't want you out there posting on Facebook or snapping or tweeting and ignorance. I want you to know. And God is not a God that needs debated, by the way. He, he is not a God that needs debated. He is a God that needs declared, all right? And so just know the truth, and it'll set you free. And so the first day of the week, they gathered in local believers to share in the Lord's Supper. Paul was preaching to them, and since he was leaving the next day, he kept talking until midnight. So right there, it's okay for me to preach long. Do you understand that, all right? That gives me the freedom to do so. So all you that have been saying, just preach till you're done, preacher, all right? You're going to get what you wish for, all right? Okay, here we go. And so he preached until midnight. The upstairs room where we met was lighted with many flickering lamps. As Paul spoke on, I love how Luke writes that. He spoke on and on. Now, I don't know how he said it, but I can just see him saying on and on. A young man named Eutychus, sitting in the windowsill, became very drowsy. Finally, he fell sound asleep and dropped three stories to his death below. Paul went down, bent over him, and took him into his arms. Don't worry, he said. He's alive. If you really read it in its context there in the original, that he says life's still in him. There's still life in him. It may look dead on the outside. I hope I'm preaching better than you're getting, and I know I'm shifting gears fast on you, but there's life still in him. Some of you have been told there's no life left in you. There's no life left in him. There's no life left in her. I promise you, where there is breath, there is life, okay? For life is breath and breath is life, according to God, the pneuma of God, the Holy Spirit of God. And so he says, there is life in him. Don't worry, he said, he's alive. Then they all went back upstairs, shared in the Lord's Supper, and ate together. Paul continued to talk to them until dawn, and then he left. That's a good preacher right there. He wasn't even sidetracked by it. He was like, bam, up, shababa, and went right back to preaching. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a good preacher right there. <laughs> he wasn't even distracted by that young and crying and carrying on. He wasn't even distracted by that when it got up. He just kept preaching. That's good preaching, right? Meanwhile, the young man was taken home alive and well, and everyone was greatly relieved. It's hard to tell the difference between a zombie and a sleepwalker. What causes us to drift off? Now, I, 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 want, I want to give you a couple things that are not in my outline that, that, I, that I thought about this morning as I was sitting at my end of the table or what I call my desk. That'll teach some of you to not sit in the very back, Pastor Bradley. Because if he'd been down in the middle and up front instead of that, that back row Baptist, and we're not Baptists around here, but I can talk about them because I once was, okay, all right? Told you that last week. I tell you about it all the time. That teaches you to sit up. Some of you going, he's just talking about me. Well, I love you. I'm just picking. But he was. He was sitting on the, he was sitting on the edge, right? I imagine that Eutychus might have been, might have been a, a, a big bone rascal like me, right? He might have got hot up in that room. Because I, 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 he's like, I got to get by a window. I can't breathe in here. The flickering lamps, the fumes. The smell, it was, it was hey, I got to get by the window, but I, I probably just like most, most church folks I know, they're just trying to slip to the back so they can make a quick exit so they don't get involved. That's why these big churches, and I'm not criticizing them, okay, at all, but that's why it's easy to hide in those. And so, so I, I noticed that I, I see him there, and then, and then, and then he, he just kind of kind of nods off. You, you, ever, you ever just kind of nod off? Some of you need to say yes because I've watched you. All right, some of you have been with me since my very first. Uh, Matthew is not here this morning. I will never forget Matthew Smith when he was about this tall. Now, you know, now he's about like uh, in here somewhere and, and like this. But I remember him being on the front row of the Baptist church in Westminster that I started my, my, my lead pastoring in years ago. And I remember I'm preaching. I mean, I'm, y'all know I'm spitting in a storm and carrying on. And when I went to catch my breath, I heard... <laughs> It was, and I exaggerate, I mean, I do not exaggerate that at all. It was the loudest, most, I'm, he's, a, he's a tight man, he's about this big. I'm thinking, where's that coming from? I was just glad it was out this end, and he was snoring real loud. And then, and then a, some of you are with me, watch this, because this has happened, this is true, this is, this is, this is, this one, this one tops it all off too, man. So I'm pastoring in Wahala. And the, and the sanctuary in Wahala had these two, had these two, uh, these, these alcoves or these, where they, where they added on to add more seats. And some of you were there. Well, you were there that morning. If you were there that morning, because some of you are still with me. Uh, you're, you're crazy for staying with me, but, <laughs> okay. And, uh, 
And so I'm preaching away, and I'm, I, I mean, I'm, it just, I, 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 you just can't make this stuff up, man. I mean, and, and I'm, pre- I'm, I'm preaching away, and I, I could hear in, 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 from the platform to my left in that alcove, I could hear. <laughs> I'd preach on, because you know I'm trying, I'm trying, Marge, you know I'm just trying to roll. I learned in Nuri a long time ago, you got you to gotta roll over some things, you know what I'm saying? Because there ain't no telling what's going to happen on the mill village. I mean, you just got to go, right? And just, <laughs> I mean, it just keeps going. And then, and then, I, I, to fast forward, I see a couple of my deacons. They get up, they go over by her, and it's a, I, I discover by then it's a lady. Husband sitting right beside her. They try to wake her up. The rest of the message. <laughs> whole time, never could wake her up. Not, not, I kid you not. I, I, I met, and so, I, I, have you ever just kind of nodded off in church? That's where that story started, right? It's happened. You ever, you ever been, some of you still in school, some of you maybe in college, you ever nod off? Some of you say, well, I, I, go, to, I, go, to, I go to school online. That was the worst one for me. I, I, I learned early on I could not do leap. I could not do it. I'm going to sit at that computer, and it's going to be like, squirrel. <laughs> that needs clean. Uh, yes, I, I you, you understand what I'm saying? And so this is exactly what happens in a church. I say all that to get your attention. Those are true stories, by the way. I, I, I promise you true stories, okay? I'm not a lying preacher. I may round up from time to time, okay, but, 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 but I'm not a liar. It's exactly what happens. And, and, and here's, what's, here's what's interesting about the text. If you think I'm just picking on church people, he's talking to the church. The only people that's going, and I don't want to be too, too rough on Eutychus because at least he was at church. And at some point he was engaged. And just like most of us, at some point you're engaged, but somewhere along this journey, you just find yourself sleepwalking. You're just going through the motion. It's just life. It's just, I'm supposed to pray here. I'm supposed to read here. I'm supposed to give this. I'm supposed to. And I want to be in a place that's dynamic. I want to be in a place where you don't know what the preacher's going to say. You don't know what the people are going to do. You don't know if Jimmy's going to cut a flip. I'm looking for him to get up on the stage and dive off of. You know what I'm saying? That I mean, I'm just saying, you just don't know. I, Jimmy, I love it, man. You know, we talk about it all the time. I don't know if. if if somebody's going to cut off running. I don't know if somebody's going to speak in tongues. I don't know if somebody's going to raise the dead. You understand? Because that means somebody's got to fall out dead. I mean, I want to be a part of something that's dynamic. I've had those that have gone through the motion, had a business meeting every month, and all in favor say aye, and all opposed nay. And, and, and I've had all of that malarkey. That's Hebrew and Greek. <laughs> I want to do life. And somewhere along the line, if we're not careful, we'll just go back to sleep. We'll just go back to walking like zombies, and it's hard to tell the difference. And what happens is, is that you do more damage in the church than you think you do. I remember this story as well. A lot, a lot of my life has, is, well, from 23 and 98 when I got saved, you're not know, assembly of God. From then, it's got a lot to do with God. Before then, it had a lot to do with, with my daughter sitting there, but a lot of bad things. And they know things. I mean, anyway, and so... So one of my ministries, I was, uh, we went to uh, a camp, a, a, a camp in Kentucky, and I'm going to take a bunch of students with me, a bunch of adults, a bunch of students, and a mom tells me before we go, she goes, I, 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 want, I want somebody to know, so I want you to know that so-and-so called his name, he sleepwalks. And if I said, there'd be a lot of you, I know a handful of you that would know him and know the family. He may still do this. I said, oh, okay, all right, yeah, all right. Then I, I mean, I, you know, just like I normally do, I just, okay, whatever. So we stayed, in these, we stayed in these bunks. I'm talking about people sleeping in the church and doing more harm. And, and so, and so they, were, they were divided in half, these, 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 these little duplex kind of. And so they were bunks on the back half, and you could close the door, and there were bunks on the front half. And so I chose to take a bunk in the front half because them dudes stunk. I mean, we ain't even been there a day, and it smelled like ungodly, right? And so I'm like, mm-mm, I'll stay here by myself, okay? And so uh, uh, that, first, that, that first night, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm minding my own business, and, and there's, no, there's no, no reception up there or anything like that, no service as far as using the phone. And, and, uh, and so I've, I've got a book, and I'm being godly and, and spiritual. I'm trying to read something godly and spiritual. And so, and so I, I feel like I'm drifting off. And, and so somewhere along the lines, I drift off. And I don't know how much time had lapsed, but all of a sudden it was like, bam. And I looked to my left, because I, I rolled this way. I looked to my left, and here he comes, and he's just walking. And he just stands there. I call his name. 
He scratches his head and does other things. Literally turns around and goes back in there. And you're talking about scare somebody? Because remember, I told you this before my mom was in heaven, but one, one of the things I have and like to watch scary movies is my mother, when we got that Curtis Mathis VCR that was about 1000 bucks, and I know they saved it about two years to get. They had to pop up on top. Well, Curtis Mathis give you free rentals for a long time. She watched every horror movie that you can I'm talking about the just gory, uh, B a line, it's just crazy movies. So, I mean, I got all these things in my mind, right? I know God is my shield and my buckler and my protector, but I thought this dude tried to kill me, right? And so what happens is, is how, how you say, why don't you tell us that story? It's because this is what happens in the church, is that you go through the motions, right? You just, you just sleepwalk through the motions, right? You just show up, you just go through the motions, and what you don't realize is you do more harm than you do good, and you scare more people because, see, when they look at your life, oh, God, this is good preaching, I hope you're getting this. When they look at your life, they don't see any difference in your life than they do their life because they're still zombies, but you're sleepwalking and call yourself a Christian. And so when they say, well, why in the world would I want to get up extra early on Sunday morning? Why would I want to give money? Why would I want to do this or go there or go overseas or go, or go downtown and help us pick up trash at Norton's Park or tell people that Jesus loves them? Why would I do that if my life looks no different than their life? And so what happens is if you don't stay fresh in God, staying alive, staying awake, what you do is more damage than you do good, and you scare more than you help them. And there are people who have been doing that for years. There are churches this morning that are full of, of crews of people that are just sleepwalking. They're good people. They don't mean no harm. They're just going through the motions. And so I wanted you to get, here's what, here's what causes us to drift or to sleepwalk. This is what maybe happened to Eutychus. And I love what, I love what the preacher said, so this is not original to me. I, I, he's got a funky name, yes. But he said that he's got a really cool name, Eutychus. Because Eutychus too if you fell out a window. <laughs> Tweet that, baby. All right, yeah. That's not original with me, but I was like, I'm going to take that when I like that, okay? So the Eutychus, what happens? What, what, what causes him? What's he, like every other church member, let me give you very quickly because I'm going to use all my time up and I, I still want to baptize and make that domain. What causes us to sleepwalk? I think, first of all, comfort does. I think we just get comfortable. I think that most of us that live in God Bless America, we, we just, in the modern church, we just get comfortable. We want the, the music like we want it. We want the lights like we want it. We want the temperature in the building like we want it. We want the water, the temperature that we want it. We want the preacher to look the way we want him to look. Y'all, y'all missed out on that one with this one, baby. And you know, all those things, and we just get comfortable. And we just law off to sleep. Maybe Paul was monotone for that time. I don't know. I don't know if you guys remember uh, uh, James E. Kennedy. I had to listen to hours of lecture or preaching by him. He was the most monotone, boring man I had ever heard. Now, he's with Jesus now. I mean, he was boring. But thousands would come to hear him speak. So it wasn't about how he was saying. It was about the anointing on his life, and it was about the hunger in the crowd that come to hear a word from God. And so somewhere along the line, we have lulled ourselves to sleep because we're just comfortable. And comfort leads to complacency. As a matter of fact, I remember Eric saying this. I believe he said it about comfort. He says, we say this when he's, you know, deployed in the military. He said, we say this, comfort kills. Complacency kills. Because if you get comfortable and you don't, you're not aware of your surroundings and you just, you just become uh, complacent, if you're not willing to push the boundaries, if you're not willing to think outside the box, so see, you're in the box, so think in the box, yes, but if you're not willing to get outside of the box and say, what's a new way to reach them for Christ? Accept an invitation to stand on a platform where the place will be full of people that may not know Jesus Christ. Like last Sunday afternoon with the honor and privilege I had to stand at MC. You, you, get, you, you watch, follow my leadership. I promise you, I will go places and do things that are outside the box. And you may even have those around you that go to other churches go, I can't believe y'all do that. That's good. That's great that they're saying that. We've got their attention. We're not going to be sleepwalking through this life. I've wasted too much time. I'm going to be complacent any longer. And so what causes this comfort, complacency, and it all leads to compromise. It all leads to compromise. You just, you, just, you just go through the motions. You just walk through, you just walk through this zombie fight. And you compromise. And God's called you to make a stand. God's called you to do something different. God's called you to be a voice. Maybe God's called some of you to preach. Maybe God's called some of you to sing. Maybe you play an instrument, the spoons or the washboard. I'm after this bluegrass stuff, or aren't I, pastified? Okay, I don't know. Maybe the harmonica. I don't know what... I, 
and he's called you to do it and you're not doing it. It's because you've lulled yourself to sleep. You're zombified. You're sleepwalking. You're not exercising the faith and the power that you have inside you because Paul would say life's in him. And no, your situation and your circumstance may not be perfect, but you still have air in your lungs. I'm going to pick on him. I'm going to pick on him. You'll watch Daryl today. I'm telling you, you'll watch him with his absolute giftedness make his way up here and get over in a trough in front of all of you knowing, knowing, knowing that it's a difficult thing for him to do. Not because he's got to get in front of you, because at one time he couldn't even get up out of the bed, right? I've got more respect for somebody that would go through that than a guy that would be over here that's had everything given to him on a silver platter and yet he belly aches about life. You say, well, you're being mean. I'm just being real before you. This is what the church is full of. This is why churches split and divide every day, all day, and especially on Sunday. You get a guy up here in the platform, he gets puffed because he don't want to do it their way. Listen, it's never been about my way. It's been about his way. It's not about your way. It's about his way. How are we doing it according to the Word of God? And does it bring honor and glory to him? What happens to the church is they sleepwalk. They try to mimic some other church. We're not going to model any other church. I don't care if they call them life groups, community groups, happy groups, flippy groups. You get the point? Pudding groups? I like pudding, especially banana. <laughs> Just see if you're listening. You get what I'm saying, right? And this is what happens. You compromise. You just want to fit in. Why in the world, I've told you this, why in the world would you want to fit in when God's called you to stand out? Eutychus was just going to be lulled off to sleep when he didn't realize God called him to stand out. He's going to stand out in a few minutes. He's actually going to fall out. I don't mean to make fun of the situation. But he's going to fall out. And what causes us to sleepwalk is comfort and complacency and compromise. And there's a list, but I don't have time. Why, why are there so many that are drifting? Why is it? Here's why I believe there's so many of us that, are, that, that they end up sleepwalking or drifting. It takes no effort. It takes no effort. You know what, we, you know what one of the number one problems outside of sin, okay, let's just say one big word covers a lot of things, but, but you know what the number one problem in the pulpit and in the pew today is? It's laziness. It's just flat out old fashioned, has been, always will be stinking laziness. Man gets, the look, man gets his education. He thinks that's why I told Addie when she talks about being a pastor when she grows up, I support that 100%. I told you that last week. Don't tell me women can't preach. Your sons and your daughter will prophesy in that last time. He will pour out his spirit on them. Don't tell me that nonsense. You can take your denominational garbage and go over there and have your little four no more. But I tell her all the time, honey, this is not a job. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Because it is the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. And I've worked production. I've worked in machine shops. I've worked in plants and industry. I've done all those things. And there are none that requires more than being a man of God. And the reason we drift or sleepwalk is it just takes no effort. We just kind of go with the flow. You know, don't worry. Be happy. Now, I like that for a couple weeks a year when we go to the beach, especially South Beach. Anyway, flashbacks, you know what I'm saying? That's cool, but that's not reality. It's not reality. You have to get up every day and die to yourself and take up your cross. You have to get up every day and seek the Lord. Early will I seek thee, O Lord. It means sacrificing something. It means losing some of these things that we have creature comforts in our lives. Isn't it God doesn't want to bless you and you can't have all these things? There's nothing wrong with anything like that as long as it's in its priority. And, and, and here's what, it takes no effort. This is why so many, this is why so many sleepwalk at the church. It, it, it's always downstream. So most people don't even realize you're always being lulled downstream. It's never going to be against the grain. It's never going to be closer to the greater goal. It's always going to be somewhere you've already been. It's just going to drift you right back into those old habits. And so it happens to the church. They'll always, look, I love it, I love it, and, and don't you think I'm talking about anybody, but I love it when a pastor will call me up and ask me, hey, man, I want to meet with you. 
And, I, and when I say that, I usually get my team together because I don't know anything. I just preach. And they were like, how do you do this? How, do you, how are you guys doing that? What are you, how are you doing this? And what are you doing? How are you doing? And, 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 and it was, what's, what's funny is, is, is that we begin to tell them, and, and, and they go back, and, they, and, and maybe you've been a part of churches like this, and God bless those pastors' hearts. They go back to their church, and they got all this idea, and they go, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. And listen, I'm telling you, I've learned, this, I've learned this the hard way. If you've got the idea, you better be the one out there with your hands on the plow in front of everybody. If I'm going to ask them to scrub a toilet, I better be the first one in there to scrub a toilet. You understand what I'm trying to say? And so it, it, I, it, I promise you. And so that guy, he'll have those ideas, and what happens is I'll check back or, or kind of look from a distance. About, about, it, sometimes it don't even take three months, but maybe six months down the road, they're doing the same thing they've always done. Because people don't want effort. They don't want different. They want same old, same old, don't rock the boat, let me do it this way, and this way is the way we're going to do it. And so this is why so many are sleep up, requires no effort, always downstream. And listen, it's really an unconscious process. How many of you ever, I, I'll just keep it in my boat. I, I, I'll have these times where, now I'm in my 40s now, okay, I admit that, okay. I know, I know I, you think I'm in my 20s, but I'm in my 40s, I, I can be honest. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm stronger at 40 than I was. I'm, just, I'm, I'm okay with that. But I'm in my 40s. And I'm high strong. Would you say amen? Okay, all right. And I'm not even medicated today, right? I just give it a junk up. You know what I'm saying? ADD is just ADD. I'm just all over the road. It's just not gonna, there's just nothing going to help, all right? It's just the way it is. It is, all right? Because I can take it and they say I'm worse. Go figure. But this is what's happened. I used to never, ever, never, ever, ever, and never, ever would try and never, ever could nap. Just wouldn't wired that way. But I find myself sometimes now, I'm not in my easy chair. I'm actually on the couch with my head in Sandra's lap. That's cute, right? Oh. Uh, it is what it is. And they can vouch for this. I, I, or I can just be laid back in my easy chair. But this most of the time, it's, 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 it's what happens to me. I lay down, we're watching something on TV, we get a few minutes together, and so we're watching something on TV. Girls can be on the love seat. And all of a sudden, it's like, <laughs> was I asleep? Yeah. It ever happened to you? It ever happened to you? Some of you going, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did it ever happen to you? <laughs> Some of you need to wake up now. <laughs> Did it ever happen to you? You're not even aware of it. You see, I believe people have a genuine heart. I believe they want to do what God wants them to do. But what happens is it's just, it requires no effort. And so you just, you just become a sleep ball and become a zombie. And sometimes it's just an un, unconscious process. That, that you, how many of you, don't raise your hand, amen, minutes. how many of you would have thought a few years ago that your life would be where it is now? And listen, your life is where it is by a series of choices, whether they were good choices or bad choices or both, but you are where you are by making conscious choices. Sometimes we make choices, though, and we're not even aware of them. You say, how did I end up here? Where, how, where did I go? I took a wrong turn in Albuquerque. And it's an unconscious process. Sometimes we just don't even, we're not even aware that we're sleepwalking. And I believe that happens to the church. There's a multitude of people, I believe there's some here this morning, you're just unaware that you're just going through the motions, that you're just sleepwalking, and you've drifted off, and you've become just like the zombies that walk out there that don't even know the Lord, that are not even really alive or quickened. And so it's just an unconscious process. Now the signs that you are drifting, and here's where we're going to end. Here's the signs that you're drifting. We, well, we're going to end on how to recover, but, but, but here's the signs. You just lose the desire. You, here's the loss of desire for God's Word. You just don't have a hunger for the word anymore like you used to. That's a sure sign that you're sleepwalking, that you're dying. Unconsciously, you, you, are, you are dying and becoming more zombified and petrified every day. You just don't have a desire for the word of God. And I will be transparent with you. You know that's how I roll. I have to constantly keep myself in check, not to just become a sermon machine, but a lover of the word. God did not call me to be a sermon machine. God called me to love him and love his word. And the Logos become flesh and dwell. He become the word. And I promise you, it is a struggle. And if it's a struggle for the preacher, I guarantee you, it's a struggle for the pew warmer. It's just a play of words. I know we don't have pews. And so there's a sign that you are drifting or sleepwalking is that you don't have a desire for the word of God. You don't have a desire to pray anymore. And don't answer this or look at me or amen or anything like that. But just how many of you, I, I, there's sometimes, man, there's sometimes, if it wasn't for the girls, we wouldn't have prayer. Because I don't feel like praying. I, I, and I hope that don't let you down. I, I, I hope that does not disappoint you. If, if that disappoints you, you've been hanging out with me long enough. Because I've got a whole long list of things that will disappoint you about myself. 
I suck outside of Jesus. The only thing good about me is Jesus. I promise you that. And Sandra and the girl should have said, amen. You just just don't have a desire to pray. And what happens is we we try try to spiritualize and go, well, God knows anyway. He knows my heart. He just knows. Well, he knew where Adam and Eve was, but he said, hey, where are you? He wanted them to know he knew where they were. It's a sure sign that you, you're, you're, you're sleepwalking, you're drifting, you're just going through the motion. Oh, you come to church, but there, there's just, just this lack of desire for the Word of God, for prayer. There's a, there's a loss of a desire to give. I'm, I believe an up close, alive, living, quickened man or woman of God is a generous person. I believe they're generous not necessarily just with their money. I think they're generous with their time and their talents as well as their treasure, as that old preacher used to call those things. And it is hard to stay fresh. But I promise you, if you will apply these things to your life and you will become aware of them and keep them in check, that giving, that generosity, that hunger for the word, that hunger for talking to God and hearing from God, I promise you it will stay there and you won't sleepwalk. And so there's a, there's a, a loss of desire to give. There's a loss of desire to talk to others about Jesus. When's the last time, hey, when's the last time you told somebody else about Jesus? I, I, no, 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 I'm not talking about you tell them a story about your life. I'm, I'm talking about Ray Comfort. I'm talking about old school, just in your face, Jesus loves you. No, 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 I didn't say tell them they're going to go to hell. I don't think that's the, the right way to initiate the conversation. Maybe some, some scenarios, God will give you that, pie, that, 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 that nudge to say, hey, you can go to hell if you keep doing that. <laughs> I don't know. It don't work for me, Okay. When's the last time you say, hey, man, Jesus loves you? Just use the name Jesus. Not this modern terminology and you're a seeker and I, wanna, I don't want to offend anybody. Get over it. At this church, we don't give participation trophies. We don't believe in them. There are winners and there are losers. You ask everybody on the day of judgment when we stand before God, there will be some that will get in. There will be some he will, he will say, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity, depart from me. And I guarantee you at that moment, they will not feel like winners. So don't tell me it's not biblical. And what scares me more than anything is that that'll be the people of God. That'll be the men of God that's, that prophesied and cast out demons in his name. So that means they had the ability to do things that looked like God. But they were never of God. Sleepwalking zombies. They look alive, but they're not. You, I, pray, I hope you're getting this. This is how we know we're drifting. You don't, you don't talk about there's a loss of awareness of God's presence. I, I hear people all the time, I just don't feel God like I used to. Well, it's like an old church sign. Hey, God hasn't moved. You have. You take a whole church, say, man, I'm telling you, God's not here. I, I, this, this, one drives, this one drives me crazy because they've even said it in the four years we've been in existence. And I say, more power to them. They say, I just wasn't getting fed over there. There was something wrong with your appetite. I don't need you to amen me or write me a letter later and say, you're a good preacher. I go to sleep every night knowing I did right before my king, and it is well with my soul. People are looking for something outside of God, a tickling of their ear. You're drifting. You're drifting when you absolutely, and they, they say this, I don't feel God. God didn't move. And, and let me say this, too, while I'm, while I'm in arena. Be very careful of your feelings. <laughs> I don't feel saved every day. And I'll be honest with you. I, I, got in my tra- I got in the trailblazer this morning to make my way over here about 9 o'clock, maybe 8.45. Ended up really getting going about 9 o'clock. I was about backed over a bicycle that was behind it. <sighs> I love my daughters. <laughs> they may not think it sometimes. <laughs> it's only going to get worse. But on my way here, I said, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. You ain't going to listen to me. I tell you that all the time. I'm telling you, that's how the enemy works. That's how the enemy works. 
And so I know if he's doing it to me, that he's got to be doing it to the people that I'm, that I'm under shepherd of or that will be here that had no idea this is the message that he would preach because God knows. And here's the thing is that you have to come hungry. You have to say, that, listen, I, I, I want more of God and, and I don't want more of the world. You say, how do I recover from drifting? How do I, how do I wake up from my slumber? As Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, he'd say, wake up, you that are slumber, slumbering. Let, let, me, let, me give you, let me give you three words, okay? And I'm going to give invitation. You still with me? Say amen. This is how we wake up. Realize that you are drifting. Realize is the first word. You have to realize there's something wrong. You don't feel God like you used to. You don't have a hunger for the word. You don't give like you used to. There's no excitement. Listen, I think if you come to church, there ought to be some excitement about it. I think, I think when you talk, listen, I want you to do this. When you post about church or you post about one or you talk about one, I want you to do it with some excitement. Even if it's saying that crazy preacher, man, he is out of his mind. I don't care. But when you talk about it, it ought to be with some zeal. Because I don't want to be a part of a dead, average, go through the motion church. If I want to do that, I'll go to the local denomination and just be a part of them. I do not want to be a part of that. And so you have to realize that there's something wrong. And then watch this. Here's the second word. Just repent. Preachers don't want to use that word anymore. They say it's not, it's not relevant. It's not, it's not comforting to those that are seeking. Listen, I'm not here to comfort you. I'm not here to pat you on the back. I'm not here for you to like me or love me. I'm here for you to fall in love with him. In order to do that, you've got to realize that you are a sinner in desperate need of a Savior. And the only way to him is to repent, which means to turn from the world and embrace him and his kingdom. For behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. So how do I wake up? I realize I'm asleep. Man, I'm not hungry like I used to be. I want more things of the world than I do of God. I've not told anybody about Jesus lately. You couldn't tell I was a follower of Christ by my post and anybody else. You realize it. Repent. Stop doing it. Turn around. Ask for forgiveness and be obedient. And then lastly, return to an attitude of submission. Realize, repent, and return. I read a story this week. I read a story this week about these two guys that were fishing. They were fishing above the dam. It's not a local story, but a true story. They were fishing above the dam. Man, they got so busy fishing, they was having such a good time that they did not realize by the time they realized, by the time they tried to turn around and return, it was too late. About a week later, they found one body, and they said about three or four weeks later, they recovered a second body. I said, man, what a great picture of the church. We've allowed the world, Satan, and his associates and those that call themselves Christians and even preachers to lull us to sleep, to sweet talk us into this health and wealth, into this nonsense that there's no need but just whatever makes you happy, you go along. I promise you, in Christ, there's a joy unexplainable. There's a peace beyond anything this world offers you. There's a contentment and a purpose that will drive you only in Christ that you won't find in the world. But if you don't turn now, if you don't realize now, there may not be no returning. It's scary. It's scary. But it can be liberating to know that my time is drawing near. Did you know, listen, God said he won't tarry long. And so all I'm asking you to do is to wake up now. Realize now and ask God to save you or to refresh you in him, to reignite the hunger and desire. You stand to your feet if you're willing and able this morning as we give an altar call. I want you to know some of you are new to us, and, and then I've been asked over the, I, I said, I'll just keep it to myself until it is enough people ask me about it. Then I will tell you, maybe I've told you before and I haven't said it in a while. If you have desire, we do have prayer cloths here. We've been asked for those. Those, those come from when Paul couldn't get to everybody. He would cut his cloth. He would anoint them. He would pray over them. And you say, what do you, people use those for? That's their business. But most people that I say, preacher, would you, would you please give me a prayer cloth and pray with me? They usually slip it in the, the bed of someone sick. 
put it in a book somewhere for somebody to get it close to them that may not know Jesus Christ. Maybe they need a healing in their life. I just want you to know, and I'm going to say this every week, we have those here that have been anointed and prayed over. We do believe in laying on hands. We have anointing oil here. We have a little vial. It's from the Holy Land. We will, we will anoint you and pray over you. There'll be those here, Pastor Sandra, Heath, others that, that, that work the altar. Uh, John, there'll be people down here that'll work the altar. I'll pray with you and pray over you. I usually do it from here because normally I'm wringing wet with sweat. But I want you to know you're in a place that believes in the power of prayer. I believe in the miraculous of God. And I, 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 I want to say this before I open the altar. I don't want you to feel beat down if you have drifted. Because see, what Eutychus didn't realize and what the crowd didn't realize is that his, him being drifted, his, his mess, God was going to take it and use it to make one of the greatest miraculous messages in that moment. What God did in that moment was solidify the message. I don't know if you caught that. See, he, he, he said life's still in him. There's still hope. And then he used him to absolutely solidify the power of a, of a God of all the world that holds the universes in the palm of his hand. So don't think that your mess is not a setup for a message or the test that you're going through is not a setup for a powerful testimony. Because I promise you, our God is a God of resurrection. He took Lazarus and he raised him from the grave. He took off the grave clothes. And the next time you read about Lazarus, he's sitting at the table with him and people are asking questions. And the crowd was there because they'd heard of the man that had been raised from the dead. They had no idea that Jesus was about to do that and take it to the whole next level. So don't feel defeated this morning. God's setting you up for something miraculous. He's setting you up for something powerful if you'll just but let him. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray over you. No, our altar's open. I know it's a high school auditorium, but it has been prayed over, sweat on, cried on. I promise you, this moment in time, it is the house of God, not because of the building, but because His Spirit's here. You say, how do you know that? I brought Him with me. You brought Him with you if you are a child of God, and He's going to work here this morning because I believe. All you got to do is believe. So every head bowed, every eye closed, and in this place this morning, if you're not certain that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says there is this thing that you have to do. It is confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart. You say, what do I believe? You believe Jesus Christ was the Son of God. You believe he lived a sinless life. You believe by faith that he died on Calvary's cross. You believe by faith on the third day he come from a borrowed tomb back to life. Joseph's tomb, he borrowed, only needed three days. And the same power that raised him from the dead is the same power that will resurrect your dead life right now. Jesus is that name. So if you're here this morning and you need Christ, here's what I want you to do. I want you to say, Jesus, save me. I repent. I turn from the way I'm living. And I embrace your way and your will for my life starting fresh right now.